everyone and welcome to the Chef's Table Series. My name is Carol O'Connor, co-host of this instructional cooking show. Today we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day. I am here with my nephew and my two nieces. This is Paul, Mary, and Emily. Hi. And on the show today we have Chef Denise O'Neill. She is the executive chef of Eat with Jack O'Neill located in West Roxbury. She will be cooking along with my co-host Joe Murphy the traditional Irish dinner corned beef and cabbage, served with her way of making cabbage, potatoes, carrots, and her own brown bread. So let's bring Denise and Joe over to the show to learn how to make this cultural Irish dish. <laughs> I'm Chef Joe Murphy. I'm a co-founder of the Chef's Table Foundation. This TV series, the Chef Table series, is produced by the Chef's Table Foundation. The foundation is dedicated to raising money to support U.S. homeless veterans with a seven-month culinary school education. And in determining who are we going to support, you know, Co-host Carol O'Connor came up with the idea while we're a cooking show that a lot of people that would love to have a culinary school education. So this really is our first focus, homeless U.S. veterans. The next position would be homeless young adults with a high school or GED equivalency diploma. And uh, I'm sad to say in 2013, the state of Massachusetts documented 6,000 homeless young people, 18 years old and younger, in this state alone. And while well, that's a huge number, we believe, and we've been told, it's probably three times that because they, these teenagers, they go underground and they can't find them. Mm -hmm. So it's a very sad situation. And uh, we decided that this show, we're reaching two and a half million people currently 52 weeks a year. And what a great way to let people know that there are people in need. And this is our hope that we can fulfill our mission. We want to send five people this year as our target to this seven month culinary school. Having said that, you know, generally, we for the last three years, we've, we've always had a St. Patrick's Day special. And we have the new restaurant, Chef Denise O'Neill from Eat with Jack O'Neill, is a wonderful chef and a terrific person. And the O'Neill family, they're a gracious group. And they'd have to be to capture you, darling. <laughs> so having said that, you know, on the first time we had Chef on the show, I told the story how Carol and I wanted to go out of the country to find a chef. And we decided, because it's Carol O'Connor and Joe Murphy, let's go to Ireland. So we went to the Emerald Isle and we, we found Denise O'Neill. Excuse me, I get a little tongue tied because I'm going to sing a little song. <laughs> There's an emerald in the sea that's known as Ireland. And we have the crown jewel, Denise O'Neill. We had to fight like the Dickens to get her out of the country. But we are so grateful she's here. And we look forward to your restaurant opening in six, seven weeks, I guess? Six or seven weeks, yes. That would be great. Yeah. And uh, it is an Irish restaurant, but it, it also has the pub side as well. It does, yes. And you're going to be cooking a lot of Irish dishes. A lot of Irish dishes. Right. Yes. Now, my Italian-American friends tell me that a six-course Irish meal is a six-pack in a baked potato, but we know that's not true, right? That's not true. No. Right, <laughs> right. Sure. Okay, well, the, I do know the Irish cuisine has really broadened tremendously in the last 25, 30 years. For sure, yes. And, and it's quite a bit different. So, having said that, Let's get going. Okay. Uh, to my surprise, I didn't know Chef was going to do this. She brines her own corned beef. 
And I've always thought that the corned beef was an inexpensive piece of meat. And that's why when the Irish came here during the famine and after the famine, they had nothing. And they were able to get the corned beef, of course the cabbage, the potatoes and carrots were inexpensive. That's right. But a wonderful man by the name of Colm O'Neill, Denise's husband, told me this story. Because if you talk to an Irish person, meaning from Ireland, I'll say, do you eat corned beef and cabbage? Mm -hmm. And they have all say that, I don't care where they come from in Ireland, they all say the same thing. I don't eat that stuff, <laughs> okay? Well, Colm told me, actually, corned beef dinner, St. St. Patrick's Day, started in 1620 in the city of Cork. And Cork, the second largest city in Ireland, was known for brining, brining beef. Mm -hmm. So actually, for the Irish people that say they wouldn't eat that stuff, they're carpetbaggers. They're not telling the truth because it, it is pretty common, right? <laughs> Corned beef went out of fashion at home for sure. They eat Irish bacon. They, we, we eat Irish uh, bacon, but it's definitely on the comeback. It Brining is. itself is on the comeback as well. Okay, great. So, Chef, why don't you talk to us, first of all, we met, talk about mise en place, and it's a French term, and in every professional kitchen you will see it. And I talk about this on every show because it'll really make your cooking experience a lot more fun and a lot more seamless as far as not missing ingredients, running around the kitchen, gee, I forgot this or that. So, in brining, why don't you tell us what you have there? So, in brining, we have, a sli I have our cut of meat, which is a brisket, is what oh. I used. You could use silver side, which is a more expensive cut. What, say that again? Silver side. Silver side, okay. Um, so, you have your, um, your brisket, you, um, you put it in, um, uh, probably, a, probably the best thing, or um, something that you can cover, and you add in spices. So we have all spice berries, peppercorns, cloves, whole cloves, cinnamon sticks, coriander seeds, mustard seeds, um, chili flakes, and ground mace. Wow. Cover it with um, water the brisket with water and salt, lots of salt for the okay. brining. Right. And you literally, um, you make sure that the meat is totally covered and even if you want to put a weight on it to make sure the meat is, doesn't come up out of the brine. Yeah. Cover it, put it in the fridge and for at least five days. Right. So, you know, right. just now, for it to... When you say at least five, we talked a little bit. Generally, would you go longer if, when you're doing it, if possible, or is five yeah, days? Five days is, is plenty, uh, plenty, is okay. plenty, but if you, something goes wrong and you have another day or two, no harm done, it's still there, it's fine, it's perfect. Right. Uh, a quick thing I want to say about when you add your water, when I was in culinary school, they always told us, never use hot water. Oh, cold water, cold water. Always cold water. Mm -hmm. Why? because sometimes you can get things that'll float up out of your hot water tank and you don't want that to integrate your food. So when you're using water, I don't care if it's for brining, boiling, always use making pasta, start with cold water. Okay, yep, that always. is the preferred method. Even in Ireland? Yes, they even probably in talk Ireland. The world, <laughs> right? Okay, great. So. Uh, we, you put all your brining in, then you add your water. Add your water, put it into the fridge and your salt and put it into a fridge and leave right. it for five days, right. minimum five days. Right. Now but what type of salt do you use? Um, you can use the coarse the, salt. So a good kosher a good, salt yeah. or a sea salt? Or a sea salt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Versus the table salt. Versus, oh yeah, not the table salt, the coarse right. salt. Right. Yeah. And there is a little story about table salt versus kosher or sea salt. And it really comes down to by volume, not by weight, there is less sodium because the crystals are so much larger than your table salt that you're gonna get less sodium. It's that simple. So by volume, a cup of kosher salt and a cup of table salt, the kosher salt 
are much larger crystals, and that includes sea salt, by the way. Mm -hmm. And so you're not getting. And I, I personally feel the flavor profile oh, on the course much is nicer. much nicer. Much nicer. Right. Yeah. yeah for so, sure. anyways, having said that, so now, yeah, I want to make one other point. During this time of year, you couldn't do this in a professional kitchen, but if you have a side porch and you don't want to leave a big pot with corned beef brining in your refrigerator, you could put this on your side porch if there's no heat and it would be perfectly fine, unless it froze. Unless it froze, yeah. Right. So just uh, my own, I would do that if I didn't have room in the refrigerator. Now, okay, we, we brine this for five days. Five days? Okay. Now, we put it on the stove. You bring it to a boil? So you um, transfer it to a saucepan, put it on the stove, fill it with cold water again. Right. And um, you bring it to the boil, which right. we have done. Um, well, it's on its way there. Once it's brought to the boil, then we add in our carrots, our onions, and parsley and thyme, mm -hmm. mustard powder, and more salt. Okay. So we bring it to a boil. We add in chopped carrots. All right. We can put that in here. Okay. Whoops, sorry. Your fresh thyme. Fresh thyme and parsley. Okay. You notice Chef has a string on her parsley. That's designed, you'll see this in a professional kitchen, so when you're done, you can just lift that, well, if it was a, you know, a, if it was a wrapped um, bouquet garni, bouquet garni yeah. you, know, you just lift it out, and that's why there's a string on that. And generally, if it has a handle, you would tie it to the handle so it doesn't float in. Right. Okay. So, you've got your salt in there. Now you have your mustard powder. My mustard powder. Right, and that's just, so you just can buy that on any retail shelf. Yeah, it's just Coleman's mustard powder. Okay, which is great. And literally, just give, give it, it a, a stir. stir. You bring it up to the boil. Right. And that boils and bring it down. Once it boils, bring it down to simmer point and that cooks away for between three and four hours. Right. Now, what size piece of meat is that? That's a four pound brisket. Okay. So three to four hours, right? Yeah. And you should remember, Chef just gave you a great tip. Bring it, once it reaches boil, bring it to the simmer. Why? If you don't, that meat will not tenderize. When you cook it in a slow simmer, that really tenderizes, particularly this cut of meat, okay? And there'll be another technique we'll talk about as far as when you're serving it. But do not keep that rolling boil. It has to be a simmer, and that's why it's a four or five hour process. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, you've, you put your carrots in there. You put your uh, onion in there. So when you get ready, I always like cooking the potatoes in the same water. Is that what you do? Or? No, no, I okay. do it separately. Right. Um, for me, it just works better separately. Fine. Some people yeah. like the taste of it yeah. all in one pot. Right. I prefer it separate. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and, and this is a great tip. It, it's you know, cooking really is an art form. It's two taste. And in your cookbooks, I mention this pretty much every show, if you get a cookbook and you see the symbol TT, that means two taste. So Chef has her technique of cooking her side vegetables in a separate pot. Having said that, are you using some of the water? I'm using the water, yes, from this for my cabbage. Okay. Not for my carrots, but for my cabbage I am. And what about your spuds? <laughs> Not for my spuds either, I'm afraid. I see. Now, do you just... I just, uh, literally, I steam, I steam my potatoes. I try to get a floury potato. Yeah. And the one over here, it seems to be the Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold, yeah. okay. So Chef just gave you a tip. She would like a floury potato. And she has found Yukon Gold is the best choice. Mm -hmm. And if I annoy Chef, I'm glad it's flowery, because if you throw it at me, 
I feel like you hit me with a rose. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, fine. Now, for the sake of television, this has been simmering for quite some time now. I notice you have another stock pot here with a ladle and liquid. And what would this be for? So that is for my cabbage. So when I'm going to cook my cabbage, right. I am going to use the liquid from um, previously boiled brisket. Ah, okay. And that will help flavor... And that will help flavor the cabbage. Yeah. Right, okay. Now, I remember my grandmother years and years and years ago telling me, when you cut the cabbage in half, there's that core. The core. She always took a paring knife and didn't cut all the way through, but cut a great bit of it you away. Cut the core out, yeah. Right. And yeah. why is that? It's just too hard. You wouldn't... It's not digestible. Right. Okay, it's not digestible, and I believe it, according to her, it's bitter. Yeah, it would be bitter, yes. Yeah, okay. So, I saw the carrots, and I see the cabbage and the potatoes behind us. Where are the parsnips? <laughs> no parsnips. <laughs> no parsnips. Parsnips are a, a great vegetable, I would They are, they, yes. They yeah, love yeah. the parsnips. They do. Okay. Yes. And did you tell me before the show if I brought up the parsnips, you were going to hit me with a bag of them? I'm going to wait. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, simmering for four to five hours. She has some reserve uh, liquid from a brisket that she had already cooked. And now we're going to show them your technique on doing the cabbage. Okay. And you did something I've never seen anybody do. And you, you julienne the cabbage. I do. I cut it finely, shred it finely, yes. Okay. Is that just because you like the bite of it or versus trying to pick out that big dripping piece or wedge of cabbage? Uh, yeah, the texture is nicer and it, it doesn't take long to cook either. It's very quick. Okay, good. As well. All right. So, having said that, why don't we show them the potatoes Okay. and... The, the cabbage, right? The cabbage and the carrots, yeah. All right. Now, you're, gonna, you, you're not going to steam the potatoes here, are you? I'm or? not, no. So it's just ordinary steamed potatoes. So just the water in a, a saucepan, steamer on top, and the potatoes on top, and just boil right. away. And, you know, that's actually, I'm thinking through the steaming. I, I've never done it that way. I've never seen anybody do it that way, but it makes sense. Because if you use the all-in-one pot method, I'm sure you've all had the experience when you're trying to get those potatoes out, they're breaking in half on you, they're floating, it's the skin's flopping off it, That's and it loses that eye appeal. Yeah, yeah. So these are just ordinary steamed potatoes. That's it. Well, aren't you brilliant? <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Okay. So, we're going to do your cabbage next or the potatoes? What would you like to do? Um, we might do the carrots next. Okay, actually. Fine. All right. And we're using this. No, I'm going to use this one here for the carrots. Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. my bit of water. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to move this back here. I'm going to swap places with you. Burner, if that's okay. Okay. So I literally have my carrots here. So I just chopped them at an angle. So I peeled my carrots, chopped it at an angle. Right. So it's, let's see, really, there's nothing in it. Right. And you notice chef's cutting technique, those fingers were tucked in. It's not a chopping, it's a slicing motion. So I'm just going to bring this up a little okay. bit. Okay. For the sake of the show, we're going to take this cooked on beef and set it there and maybe we'll move the carrots over here and people can see what we're doing. Is that okay, okay Chef? That's fine. So I am going to put in, um, I have some water in here. There's only about 100 ml of water in here and what enough of... How much? 100 uh, milliliters. Milliliters. Okay, in the U.S. we talk about <laughs> ounces. Yes. <laughs> now, are there 29 milliliters to an ounce? I, I, uh, liquid, I know that's grams versus ounces is about yeah. 29 and a half. 
grams to an ounce, but on mill. So you're talking about, is it three and a half ounces, is it? Yeah, probably. It looks like it would be. Okay, so in any event, you just put maybe a quarter of a cup of water in there, and uh, that would be four ounces, it looks like. And you put about two tablespoons of butter. Yeah. Now, is that Irish butter? It is Irish butter. It's curry gold. Curry gold. Is it, it is. salted? It is salted, yes. Oh, okay. And you usually use the unsalted for doing pastry and so forth. Right. Salted for right. cooking. Very, very mm -hmm. good. So um, I'll add in my carrots. Right. And just a little pinch of sugar as well. Oh, brilliant. So. I'm guessing, so if I say something that's not correct, I want you to just tell us. There's a quarter cup of water, mm -hmm. you put your carrots in there, and look like two tablespoons of butter. Yep. Okay. My guess is, as the carrots are cooking in the water, that water's going to... Disappear. Disappear, mm -hmm. it's going to cook off, and then you're going to have the butter and you add sugar, so you're going to wind up caramelizing all in one yes. technique. Yes. Okay, great. So I'm just going to do just a little bit of pepper. Yep. You know, um, the, these are uh, tips, uh, time-saving tips, actually. Uh, I would always cook the carrots, then take them out, drain them, put the butter in a saute with the sugar. That's right. Ca and caramelize them. But this technique here, you're reducing... You're your, reducing it, yes. Yeah, you're reducing your cook time, you're reducing the amount of pans you use, so it's actually a great tip. Okay, so I added a little pinch of salt as well. So that I am I'm going to bring up... Just a little more. There we go. Yeah, and that water is cooking down. So I'll bring that to just literally to the boil, and then I'll turn it down again and just let it cook slowly. Right. And roughly around 15 minutes, yeah. 15, 20 minutes, that water will have disappeared. Um, should cover it with a lid. Right. And I do have a question. Um, I don't think we have a lid for this I pan. I think we do. But having said that, if you put the lid on, that steam is not going to go into the air. You're going to keep the moisture in there. And that will help yes. produce a heat barrier That's as well. right. Or you could put a, a sheet of tin foil or something right. just to trap the heat, right. basically. Right, right. And you know, in a professional kitchen, if you don't have a pan that you need, uh, you'll see professional chefs. They'll just take a clean pan and put it right over it, which is fine, okay? Whatever you have at home. Yeah. You're not going to have 10,000 pans, lids to fit everything. So do not be afraid to use another pan. Or, as Chef said, you could use aluminum foil. And this will help bring it cook quicker as well, It'll bring the boil up much quicker. And I like this technique that, she, that uh, Chef Denise just explained again. I'm going to uh, just talk about it again quickly. The butter, the salt, the sugar, mm -hmm. a little bit of water, and let that cook down and then you're actually, it's all being done in one process. Great idea, great. You know, when you have a house full of people and you're trying to get that meal together, you know, and everything comes at the same time, it's, it's a great technique. So, I commend you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so, so, anyways, now, what about the potatoes? The potatoes, I, um, we're going to do the cabbage. Oh, actually. the cabbage, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Not the potatoes. Okay. Yeah, you're avoiding the potatoes. I'm avoiding the potatoes. I'm, guess, I'm guessing we don't have a steam basket here. Because we don't have one. Oh, just... that's okay. All right. So I'm going to move these over so we can see what you're doing and get that out there like that. Okay. Now, I can actually hear this water boiling. And it came up very quickly as soon as you put that pan on there. See that? So it really does increase your cook time. I'm sorry. In increase the time you have to. No. Decrease I guess I your cook time. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're going now going to do our cabbage. So I have my cabbage. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I want to talk about the cabbage again. This is something I've never seen. You usually get it in the wedge. On your prep time, it probably takes a little bit longer. Yes. Unless you have a robo coop <laughs> and you put it through your food processor or, you know. It, yeah, but it's as it's, it's quick to just hand do it. Right, right. If you're a Ginsu warrior with your knife, <laughs> it's quick. But for us home cooks, it might take a little bit longer. But I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so you literally get your, this is Savoy cabbage. And oh, uh, Savoy? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Is that what you use? That's what we use, yeah. In Ireland? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, you take out the outer leaves, you take off the outer leaves of the cabbage, uh, cut the cabbage in half and then in quarter, and you take out the core, as right. you explained earlier, and then you cut um, against the grain, basically, right. again. And it's just literally shredding it, basically, right. like that. Yeah. You know, um, we, they use a different type of cabbage here, although they sell Savoy. On a taste, from a palate standpoint, the Savoy is, I find, quite a bit milder. It probably is, yeah. Than the, the regular cabbage, the hard cabbage the we hard. sell. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, so you shredded your cabbage. So I shredded my cabbage, literally, yeah. just like that. So what I'm going to do is add um, a couple of spoons, um, probably just literally. Ladles. Ladles, a uh, ladle and a half, and a bit of butter again. Oh, wow. And which one is this? So I'm just going to bring that, melt that. Mm -hmm. So as this water cooks off, you'll be coating the cabbage with the butter as well. So it's literally be steamed off again, yes. Wow. Yeah. Very good. And the cabbage is going to make its own water as well. And the cabbage is going to yeah, make its it, own it water, Yeah, it has a lot yeah. of water on it, so you don't have to put it in a pot and boil it. That's it. Okay. I can see why you don't put the cabbage in your pot, because shredded, you'll be looking at mush. You would be looking at mush, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, literally. So. Now, is this technique on the cabbage classic in Ireland? Yep. It is? Yep. Okay, very yep. good. Yep. All right, so we're just letting that, wa that water and the butter melt. Yes. Okay, so. And then I will add this and literally coat it, a bit right. of salt and pepper. Right. Put a lid on and a few minutes, la a few minutes later then I'll turn it again and just until it's cooked basically. Sweet. Okay, can we put that cabbage in? Is it too early or? Turn that up. <laughs> I gotta tell you, you know, the carrots with the, with the butter and sugar in there, the aroma is terrific. And you're not gonna get that heavy aroma from the Savoy as you would a no. typical cabbage you'll see on sale in the supermarkets. Exactly. So. So I'm just going to coat Right. The cabbage. Yeah. Wow. Let's take a peek at these carrots here. And you can see that this water is cooking down. And actually, I don't know if you can pick it up, you can see the butter has melted with the sugar and you're getting a little bit of color in that water, which is great. Okay. So I'm just gonna let that. All right, so you're gonna somewhat steam this then as I am well. going to, yes. Yeah. All right. Now this would be, you could actually do this earlier, a couple of hours, of course. and do a quick reheat, right? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Uh, okay, yep. great. Yep. So literally that's just doing away, and we right. have our carrots doing away here. Right. Uh, a quick question. Uh, for the sake of the show, I know you held back a corned beef, a, a piece of brisket, so that we can show the people how to cook, uh, cut the brisket properly, yes. Yes. okay? And I can't wait to dig into your beautiful brown bread. And you know, we chef broke this in half, but that's what it would look like. You know, you get that cross like you would a hot cross bun, and uh, that probably goes back to uh, a religious theme. We used to say you make the sign of the cross to let the fairies out. The fairies <laughs> out. Oh, very good. Okay. So, 
Okay, we're going to move this beautiful Irish brown bread that Chef Denise made. Now, did you have the kids knead the dough for you? Hmm? <laughs> There's no kneading an Irish sort of bread. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so, very little handling, very little handling. Right. Okay, let's talk about cutting a corned beef brisket. Uh, the tenderizing process we've already talked about, using a slow cook, slow roll, uh, roll in that pot. But, Chef, why don't you talk about this piece of brisket in the grain so that people understand the best way to cut this. So, the best way to cut this is against the grain, so it's literally we're going this way. Right. I don't know if we can pick this up in the camera, but you can see striates of the grain. Okay, if you cut that with the grain, meaning in the same direction, it will be like chewing leather. So, the technique is to cut against the grain. Mm -hmm. And Chef just positioned the meat, and so, so I'll do your thing. Try and cut a slice here. And what you're going to wind up with is an absolutely tender piece of meat. So that's literally it. Just yeah. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that looks beautiful. It smells delicious as well. You're brilliant. <laughs> okay. Now, while you're putting that together, I'm going to give you a plate so that we can start plating the meal. And do you want the round plate or the square plate? I'll go with the round. Okay. And... Uh, for my, you know, for our TV viewing audience, I forgot one important thing. I forgot the hat. Denise, <laughs> Chef Denise already told me, I am not putting that on my head. <laughs> but I want to say top of the morning to ye all. All right? <laughs> top of the morning, Chef. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, do I look as delicious as I feel? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, sweet. All for right, sure. so here is your plate. So this is still cooking away. The carrots are still cooking away, and the cabbage. Oh, yeah. It's still steaming away. Yeah. And again, that, that cabbage is going to make its own water as well. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't a lot of liquid in here. Very little. Yeah, and she has it covered so it's, it's steaming it as well. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Now, um, for the sake of television, could we take that off and let that liquid cook down so that we can plate? We can. If that's all right for with sure. you, Chef. Oh, God. You know, all these flavors are starting to come together. Okay. I think this burner's on. All right. Why don't we get the, uh, the corned beef on the plate, and then you can, uh, we can get the pre-steamed potatoes. We're not going to steam the potatoes. I think we talked about that. But your technique is to steam them, and that really makes sense. Yeah, it does. I would use the liquid myself just to get those flavors into potato because I like it that way. So that would be my technique. If I was going to steam it, I would still use the reserved water from the cooking of the corned beef. Yes. Would yeah. you come to dinner at my <laughs> house if I did it that way? I guess I'd have to, wouldn't I? Yes, you would. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'll Okay. Just there you go. Can our audience smell some of this cooking? Can you see me through the smoke signal? So Oh that looks lovely. And I can hear this, as Chef just took this off, you can tell that that water is really boiling down because you're getting that sizzling, which generally is an indication that it's, there isn't a lot of water left. 
No, there isn't. This is the cabbage is practically done. Okay. So you want a little bite in the cabbage. Yes. You don't want it. Right. Yeah, so Chef just said you want a little bite in the cabbage, meaning when you bite it, you want a little bit of resistance. Think al dente. Al dente. Yes, indeed. Elon Daisy Italiano. <laughs> we want that, uh, you know, that little bit of bite like our pasta. That's it. Okay, well, that looks great. So. All right. We can plate I that think up, we Chef. Might just plate it out. Yeah, that would be great. It smells fantastic. Not fully. Now, if you were home doing this, you would cook this until the water was gone, right? Yes, for sure. Uh, they are cooked, but just to get a little bit of that caramelized uh, effect on your carrots, you would cook that water until it was pretty much gone, correct? Yes, yes for sure. Okay, excellent. All right, the lovely Carol, thank you very much. Now, I noticed that these steamed potatoes, they have the skin on. Yes. And that's how you do it? That's how we do it at home, and we just peel our own potatoes with lots of nice butter. Sweet. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I like this particular menu with the skin on, particularly with the Yukon Gold. It's a nice, thin skin. Yeah. Okay. A lot like certain chefs. They get a little <laughs> temperamental. Not you, of course. Of course. Okay. Even the cabbage smells great. You, you know, the Savoy is a nice choice. Yeah, it is. It's a good cabbage. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And here are your spuds. Right. Here are our spuds that we can have on the side, I guess. Or uh, wouldn't you put or them on the plate? We or? could put them on the plate. Yeah, that would be great. Lovely. Okay. Wow. And we're only missing one thing. Our horseradish. Oh, no? yes. No, I was thinking about something else. What were you thinking of? That lovely brown bread you and made. And the brown bread. Yes. Okay. But let's get the horseradish. It is here, right here. Okay. And we have. Is that parsley? No, it's chives. Oh, chives. Lovely. Okay. Or scallions, actually. Yeah. Chives, scallions, either one. Okay. Is this off? Are these off? Yeah. Okay. Great. And... Mustard. You have the mustard. What's that's that? okay. That's salt. It's fine. Well, that's salt. We don't need that. You know, Chef made her own horseradish, correct? I did. Yeah. So, that's unusual. How did you do that? <laughs> well, it's simple. It's um, horseradish root. Yeah. So it's a, it's a root right. vegetable, and you um, finely grate it. So. Um, do you peel it? You first? peel it first, and you finely grate it. Yes. Okay. And you whip up a little bit of cream. Whipped cream. Whipped cream. Yeah. And. Um, no, white sh no sugar though. No sugar. No, right. no, no, no okay. sugar. Right. White wine vinegar and um, lemon juice. Mm hmm. Salt and pepper. That's it. Okay. And, you know, we will give you the recipe on the website. But, again, remember, if you want to use, you know, vinegar, uh, what else did you say besides the vinegar? Salt, pepper. Salt and pepper and cream. And cream. Um, and lemon juice. And lemon juice. So it's two taste. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you mix your own mustard. So, yes, it's the Coleman's powdered mustard again. So you literally um, mix equal quantities of cold water with the powdered mustard. Excellent. Okay, so why don't you just put a little bit of each on the plate. We can decorate it. Okay. And uh, we can cut the bread. And we will call it a wrap. And you've done a great job here, Chef, as usual. Thank you. This smells fantastic, really. Now, is the horseradish typical? 
Uh, horseradish is, yes. Right, yeah. It is. And a lot of people, it grows very easily, horseradish. You oh, know, yeah. anybody can grow it. Okay, um, right. It grows wild at home. Right. Um, the only thing that's very strong on your eyes. Oh, it's, yeah. It's yeah. very, very strong well, on your what eyes. What I'd like you. to do, because we're running into a time constraint, if you wouldn't mind cutting this... Uh, Brown bread. Irish brown bread that you made. And this is basically a soda bread, is that correct? Soda bread, yes. Okay, so there, there's no yeast in this. No, no. So your, your leavener is the baking soda. Bicarbonate of soda, yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just take that knife there. Sure. That one, yeah. Yeah, that's your bread knife, okay. And the brown breads are common throughout Ireland. Yes, all through Ireland, yeah. you know. So, on this soda bread, like a Irish bread that we get at St. Patrick's with the raisins, the currants, and, you know, <laughs> uh, do you cook it in a cast iron pan? No, long ago we used to cook it in a cast iron pan, especially on open fires. That's why the cast iron fan, oh. our pans were used initially. But now, with the modern technology we have, it's just... Right. Freestanding in our, right. on our ovens. So yeah. Ireland isn't about thatched roofs and jaunty cots anymore, <laughs> no, right? No. My friends get mad <laughs> at me when I there. say that. <laughs> we have cars, we have electricity. Why do you keep saying that? But no, just kidding. But this absolutely looks lovely. And I don't know if I'm saying that, but what I'd like to do is just move this over and get the plate so that our viewing audience can see that. And I think you did a fabulous job, as usual. Thank you. And in talking to the general manager of the new restaurant, asking him what type of dishes you'll be making, and he said, you know, obviously shepherd's pie, mm -hmm. but you're going to be doing a beef and onion pie. Beef and onion pie, yes. And that'll have a, a flaky pastry on top. And like mm -hmm. a brown gravy inside. Yes. Now, yeah. do you put potatoes, carrots in there as well? They'll be served on the side, not, on the not side. in the particular wow. dish. Wow. What other unique dishes that we don't normally see in restaurants? So, so fish pies. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. We do that a lot at home. And, um, oh, my gosh, potato cakes oh. with salmon and so forth. And wow. Smoked salmon and that, yeah. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. All right, chef, as usual, you did a great job. And you really are the crown jewel as far as I'm concerned. And I look forward to Eat With Jack O'Neill opening. And I know that you're going to do a partial opening. One side will be open That's right, the, the week before St. Patrick's Day. We'll be open before St. Patrick's Day, yes. I'll be waiting at the door. <laughs> now, do you serve breakfast or is it breakfast, lunch, and dinner? We will be doing... Um, we will be doing... Irish breakfast, when the restaurant side is open, we'll be doing breakfast, not just Irish breakfast. And that has the bangers yes. and the yes. blood pudding. The pudding, yes. Roasted tomatoes. And the roasted that? tomatoes, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. As we say in Ireland, brilliant. <laughs> okay, this has been really a great show, and you can see that what you're going to eat if you go to uh, visit eat with Jack O'Neill, you're going to get scratch items such as horseradish. They brine their own meats, and, and I think that's fantastic. That's, that really is a great story, and you're going to get some very traditional Irish fare, and it is not a six-pack and a baked <laughs> potato. There is yeah. a lot more happening there in is. the Irish cuisine, right? There is, there is. Right. We're all living longer. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. Well, we want to thank our viewers for watching the show. Please remember the Chef's Fa Table Foundation supporting homeless U.S. veterans and underprivileged homeless young people. Uh, and having said that, if you want to re-watch this show and get the recipe, go to the Chef's Table Series TV, and you can see Chef. Uh, prepare this meal and I hope you try brining. I'm going to do it myself this year. Cool. I think it's a great technique. I'm going to get Savoy cabbage and steam my potatoes. 
caramelize and candy my carrots. <laughs> and I think I'm going to have parsnips. <laughs> All right. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. Okay. How about turnip? Do you ever put turnip in there? Not with this dish, no. No, of course you don't. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to thank you very much. And again, we look forward to seeing you next time on the Chef's Table series. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's craft beer pairing. Today it's St. Patrick's Day. So I've asked Kelsey Roth, he is a certified Cicerone as well as the brand manager of Craft Beer Cellar to choose a beer that will go for the traditional Irish dinner, corned beef and cabbage. Kelsey, what did you choose today? <laughs> so I went non-traditional. Uh, nor you know, normally we we think you know Guinness or something yep. like that's going to go great, and mm -hmm. it does go great with corned beef and cabbage. But maybe some you want something a little bit different. You want to change uh, it up? Yeah, exactly. We need to change it up when it comes to beer. So I went with uh, this is Von Trapp's Vienna style lager. Von Trapp, like like, like Sound of Music. Oh my god! Uh, it is actually the family the, um, up in Stowe, Vermont. And oh. this beer is a Vienna style lager, which is a little bit amber in color mm -hmm. and has that uh, kind of a nice caramel malt flavor to it, mm. a nice dry finish, and it's just going to go great with that corned beef and cabbage. Oh, let's taste this. <clears throat> so you said um, amber color mm -hmm. and flavors of? Uh, a little bit of a malt. Malt, uh, okay. Yeah, a little malt sweetness to mm -hmm. it. A little bit of a dry finish. It's almost similar to like a, a mm. German Oktoberfest beer. Oh, okay. Mm. So a little bready as well. Ooh. So that Malty. dry, yeah, that mm -hmm. dry finish. The sweetness is gonna, you know, when I think of corned beef, I think a lot. Of, it's usually salty. So it's very salty. Um, so this is gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is gonna help kind of balance out that salt yeah. a little bit. Um, it's going to really highlight the uh, nice roasty flavors in the corned mm -hmm. beef. And with the cabbage, you get a lot of bitterness in the cabbage. You do, yeah. And this is going to kind of help temper that bitterness a little bit, bring out the natural sweetness in the cabbage, and the dry finish uh, will kind of really help with kind of the fattiness of the corned beef. Mm -hmm. um, does, it's also low in alcohol, so. Oh. You can uh, you can enjoy it, uh, you know, for the entire meal um, yep. or however long you're enjoying uh, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, and uh, Aaron Gobra. Yes, so. <laughs> I love this. This is excellent. This is an excellent. Definitely something that you can have on its own. Mm -hmm. And it's not, doesn't, um, it's subtle. It has a nice flavor to it. It's not too t strong in taste. Yeah. It's got, like you know, it. it's, it's very light, very balanced, yeah. um, just a, a real easy drinker. And I love that it's from the Von Trapp family. Yeah. <laughs> and it's in Stowe, right? Stowe, Mass? Yeah, the beautiful brewery up there. They do all kind of German style beers. Oh. Uh, if, if you get a chance to go up there, it's we'll have to do a road trip. Out. I know. Imagine doing a beer pairing there. That would be so much yeah. fun. <laughs> With the greens of yeah. the land. Perfect. The hills are alive. So, everyone, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone this has been the graf craft beer pairing. Uh, the Corned Beef and Cabbage. I'm Carol O'Connor, co-host. And I'm Kelsey Roth with Craft Beer Cellar. We're a proud supporter of the Chef's Table Foundation. Chef's Table series. My name is Carol O'Connor. I am here with Mary Morales, one of the owners of Recreo Coffee in West Roxbury. We're going to talk about brewing. There's all different types of brewing, correct? Yes, yes there is, especially today. Um, but here at Recreo, uh, we do at least five different methods of brewing. We definitely do the espresso uh, machine and our traditional just drip Mm -hmm. coffee uh, brewing and you know that's using a machine that it's automatic so you just press a button and the coffee comes and the water you know gets brewed but also here we have specialty brews um, we have three different ones here we have the french press oh i've had that that's yeah, delicious which is my favorite mm -hmm. um, because 
I can tell it, there's no filter involved. So the flavors of the coffee that come out in a French press are full body. Mm -hmm. There's the oil stay in there. There's no, there's no filtration, mm -hmm. and so um, the the coffee is very bold mm -hmm. um, in in its taste. Also, we have um, the Chemex brewing method, and this one we are able to brew it uh, with a filter, and we use hot water at 200 degrees and we are pouring the hot water in a circle motion into the grinds in 30 se um, second segments for four minutes. So it gets brewed four minutes, but your hand brewing it to the touch. So it's very special. Um, the grinds for our Chemex are middle grinds. So it's a um, very smooth finish very gentle coffee, no matter what roast you use. Mm -hmm. Wow. And finally, we have the pour over, which is similar to the Chemex. The difference is that the grinds in a pour over are fine grind. Okay. So that means that it's more it's stronger, mm -hmm. you know, because the coffee will be brewed um, completely. Oh. So it's stronger to here than to the um, Machine yes. That I do. Yes, but oh. the, but the difference is yes. it's smoother because the coffee here, you know, the water comes down, yep. it goes through it, mm -hmm. at just you know at once. With these two methods, you are timing it and weighing it. Wow. So it's very you know it's very hands on definitely. It's like a, it's like a chemistry class. Oh totally. Coffee chemistry yeah, yeah. one hundred and one. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we were talking earlier, and I want the um, the viewers to know what is the number one and number two most um, drinking, for lack of a better word, um, beverage. The so, number one is water, yeah, right? Uh, yeah, so coffee. Coffee is the number two drink in, you know, worldwide. Like wow. people are really, you know, we love coffee. Love and coffee. I, I don't know if you've even read at the Boston Globe or even different articles, but mm -hmm. then now through studies, coffee is good for us. Yes. You can stay younger and you can, you know, <laughs> Alzheimer's. There's so many studies now. Oh, that's So I think it's going to increase. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Or well, you would think it would be wine and beer and mm -hmm. uh, the different beverages, but I love coffee. Yeah, we all need it. Yeah, we all need it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, this is ex I can't believe all these different types of brewing. I mean, you know, I grew yeah. up with just instant coffee. Yeah, you know? Know. <laughs> and even in Nicaragua, in, yeah. in where the coffee comes from, yeah. actually our brewing method is that over there. It's a cup. Oh so God. that's years ago. That's the way that people brewed coffee, just in even a sock, you know, yeah. like a real sock. And just they get would that brew coffee. It. Yeah. <laughs> Miriam, thank you for sharing this with us. I appreciate it. You are welcome. It. Thank you for having yes, me. Yes, thank you. So everyone, this has been the coffee segment of the Chef's Table series with Recreo Coffee and Roast Roastery. And I'm here with Miriam Morales, one of the owners. So we'll see you next time. As usual, he did a great job, and you really are the crown jewel as far as I'm concerned, and I look forward to eat with Jeff.